And I'll order, but um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stay for the whole meeting, so I'm speaking right now as opposed to later. <laughs> um, Kayla Hoffman, I'm in need more. Um, at a previous board meeting, I mentioned that I had filed a formal complaint with the public access counselor against the NLCS school board. The PAC returned an opinion that stated that NLCS did not violate the open door law, and I wanted to be sure that I publicly acknowledge his findings since I have been vocal up until this point. And while I respect hard work of the PAC and respect his opinion, I do stand by my original claims that I believe discussions took place in private that should, should have taken place in public. Mr. Pittman sent the NLCS response to the office of the PAC and made sure to state that I provided no evidence that things were discussed in private in relation to my complaint. And I wanted to make sure that the public is aware that there's no way I could unequivocally prove that discussion had taken place because executive sessions are private. But I spent hours building a case for my claims with as much public information as I could, despite not having rock solid evidence. As it is, Mr. Pittman is a skilled attorney and understands that if there is no evidence, there is no case. So I must concede to his ability to work a case and my inability to gather evidence that's not available to me. Mr. Pittman stated, NLCS board members never discussed these items via email or during an executive session or in any other manner that would violate the ODL. The only ones who know if this is true are the ones who were present, and there are four sitting board members who would know if this is a true claim. If robust discussion regarding the capital projects plan never took place in executive session or via email as Mr. Pittman claims, then perhaps the members of the board glanced at the plan and had no questions, a plan that had changed more than once. Based on every explanation provided, apparently the board didn't really have questions. What good is a board that doesn't question the plans to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars? Nevertheless, this matter's closed. Now you have to decide what to do with this information moving forward. I have received correspondence from Dr. Miller and Mr. Parsley that the board is on track to be more transparent and forthcoming moving forward. Here's my proposed solution for what it's worth. There's no true accountability unless it comes directly from the inside. There's no accountability for school board members conducting public business behind closed doors unless school board members speak up and hold each other accountable. There's no accountability unless board members are willing to speak up and say, yeah, we might need to do things better. I've seen the proposed calendar for board meetings this year and it would appear that someone decided it would be a good idea to take off scheduled executive sessions like has been done in the past. If my speaking out on this has helped accomplish this bit of transparency in any way, then I'm glad for it. But it has to become an ongoing practice. The public business for the school corporation is actually taking place during public session. School boards are nonpartisan, nonpolitical. The most basic of trust that the board will keep the public involved and informed when their children and tax dollars are in the balance. Make this board a proper vessel for the business of the citizens of Lawrence County.